In today's video, I want to speak about how to navigate the surprises of life as a Christian. Life is not linear. It's not something that you can just make your plans and it connects from point A to B to C to D. It's not something that is on a straight line. You have valleys, you have mountain times, you have ups and downs, whatever you want to call that. And in navigating life as a Christian, I would suggest from the beginning of this video that subscribing to God's surprises is the best. And you can only subscribe to God's surprises by trusting God's process. So I have three points to share to consider how to navigate the surprises of life. Number one, things may not go as you plan, but God will not forsake you. God did not promise you that everything you wish for and everything you desire will be given to you, but he promised you that he will never leave you. And scripture says, for hasn't he promised you, I will never leave you. Never, and I will not loosen my grip on your life. You may have plans and dreams and wishes that has not happened as you wished. But does that mean that God has forsaken you? Even though you feel like you are disappointed by God, does it mean that God has disappointed you for real? You thought that you hate him so well, and you were trusting him to bring to pass what you expected. And you are tired, you don't want to try again, you are even angry at God. Like, God, why did you disappoint me? Why did it not come as I thought? At this age, by this time, I'm supposed to be in so and so position. Why is it not happening? I remember having to believe God for things whereby I quoted scriptures in my prayer that the Lord said, I will give you the desires of your heart. And I even said that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. So it was like, God, you promised this, that my expectations will not be cut off. And why is this and that happening? And God is like, you need to follow my process. And in God's word, he did not really say he will give you everything you desire, but he said that he will give you the desires of your heart, which means he will put desires into your heart, what to desire. And I hear as if God would have said to me, some of the things you desired and wished for are not things I promised you. Whoa. And even when I misapplied the scripture in Jeremiah 29, that he said, I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and to give you a good future. I was like, God, you know the plans. Then I am pushing forth my plans and my desires to God. And many believers do this. Like, God, you said, I know the plans I have for you. But the truth is, pause. The Bible says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. So whose plan is it? Is it yours or God's? It is absolutely God's plan. God did not promise you that he will fulfill the plans you have for yourself. He said he knows the plan he has for you. And that opened my eyes. I realized this is God's plan. The best thing I can do is to subscribe to his process. Like I said in the beginning of this video, that the best thing we can do in life is to subscribe to God's surprise. Number two, trust that God's plan is best for you. I know for real that many Christians are struggling with believing that God has their best interests at heart. Many Christians are struggling with that. And I used to because the presentation that I was given of God and the perception that was built around God was just something that looks like a mediocre mindset. Someone is clothed like a grandma in the aspect of dress models and you feel like if I'm going to look for a spouse as a guy, like, is this the kind of spouse God will give me? Because the pictures that they are painting around a good woman is a woman that dresses this way without no style. And sometimes you build this perception towards God that God might be slow to walk in. That God might not really come at the time you need him. That God might not really give you that thing that is good. But the truth is you need to erase that mindset. You need to debunk such beliefs and know that your God has your best interests at heart. And God is the creator of all beautiful things that we see in today's world. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. It did not say bad and ugly gifts. He said good and perfect gifts. So if I am to believe that God gives only that which is good and perfect, why would I think that? If I'm believing him for a spouse or if I'm believing him for a job that is going to give me something minute, you no, know, that's a wrong mindset. I need to start changing my mind to believe that God's plan is the best for me. That the plan he has for me is what will bring me to that best place to be in life, which is to give me a good future. 
I might think in my mind that I know what to do to get a good future because of the fantasies I built around life, maybe around what I want, but God knows what is best for me. So you need to debunk all the myths and misconceptions you've had towards God as if God will only give you that which is not so good because God is a quality God. He's not a God of substandard. Proverbs 16, 3 and 9 says, Before you do anything, put your trust totally in God and not in yourself. Then every plan you make will succeed. If you even pause here, you can see that the scripture actually says, put your trust totally in God, which means by the time you give yourself over to God and commit to your plans and everything that you do to God, you will transform your heart first of all. And you will checkmate your motives. And at this point, your plans will align with his will. And this is where he says that what you plan will succeed. And verse 9 says, within your heart, you can make plans for your future. But the Lord chooses the step you take to get there. God is not trying to tell you man proposes, God disposes. Which means don't try to make any plan. Because if you make any plan, God is coming to destroy your plan. No. He's saying... Plan your life, plan your future, but it will not go as you want. The steps you take to get to those things you wish for, to get to that height that God wants to raise you to, will not be as you think it's going to be. So which means don't try to detect for God the steps he needs to take to bless you or to elevate you. Trust that his plan is the best for you. Number three, let your plans be subject to God's redirection. God doesn't come to knock your plan out of the way, but he will be the one to connect the dots of your life. And therefore, when you quote Psalm 37 that says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I want you to get this understanding from that. What the scripture actually says is, be pliable to God. That word pliable is a very beautiful word. Susceptible to being led or directed, capable of being shaped, bent or drawn out, which is being soft. For God to bend you, for him to shape you, for him to mold you. That's actually what delight yourself in the Lord means. It means allow God to be the one to lead you and then give you the right desires. Which means you put desires into your heart that are fitting for your life and for your future. And it starts with being pliable in God's hands. I particularly love the story of Joseph and this is what I want to use to conclude this video. The story of Joseph clearly shows someone that subjected his own plans to God's redirection. He allowed God to lead him. He allowed God to go with him through whatever he went through in life. Now, this is someone that was loved by his dad, he was loved best by his dad, hated by his brethren. And as every young man, he must have had plans and desires and how he thought his life would come out. And as Joseph's life went, all his plans and all his map concerning his life was disrupted. And the truth is, God was involved in every fabric of disruption because the Bible clearly says that God was with Joseph. And that was not because God forced himself into Joseph's life. It was because Joseph committed his life to God. He subjected all his plans as things was going in his life to God. He still trusted God in the midst of it all. Joseph's life being explained took him from being thrown into the pit to Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house, he was thrown into prison. And it was not just an ordinary prison. It was prison that was meant for the king's prisoners. From the prison, Joseph was taken to the palace. How God's redirection can work. Was that an easy journey? No. And sometimes you might be experiencing a down moment in your life. Maybe as you're watching this, you are going through a down moment right now and you thought that your life would be linear and things would just go as you thought from A to B. Like Joseph Pete, Potiphar's house, prison, then God raised him to the palace. He went on a zigzag manner. And the truth is your life might be going like that. But this is one beautiful part I want you to see about Joseph's life. That it was God's redirection. Because... In Potiphar's house, he was tempted and the temptation actually landed him in prison. But he was in those places for specific reasons. I was then thinking about this. Potiphar was captain of the guard to Pharaoh. Joseph must have learned things about the palace while staying in Potiphar's house. And that was God's plan all along. He must have had intel about Pharaoh's house and kingship and how things are being run. 
because he was staying with the captain of the guard, he was being thrown not to just any prison, but to prison that is meant for king's prisoners. And here, God is redirecting him. And the place that they kept him was where they brought the two king's servants into, where later he would need to be head of. I wanted to see how God would fit him into these places, even though they were not pleasant places. But God redirected his path. And from that prison, just at the right time, he needed to be there in that period for him to interpret Pharaoh's dream, for him to get to the palace. So you can never tell how God wants to walk through your life. The only thing you can do is allow yourself to subscribe to God's surprise, which means trust God's process and submit your plans to God. Make it subject for God's redirection. Allow God to redirect your life to whatever he wants it to be. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful and valuable to you. I am Uwe Makwan. This is my YouTube channel. If you are yet to subscribe, please do so. Hit the subscribe button now. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It will help YouTube algorithm to share it to other people that might need to see it. And don't stop there. Share the video to people, your friends and people you think or you know you need this content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye.